So last week, Dianne Feinstein introduced a federal assault weapons ban. This will have major implications for people outside of the state of California, but also for us here in the state of California, this will also drastically change our assault weapons laws. So let's talk about it. But real quick, before we jump in the video, if you think that the federal government needs to keep their hands off of our firearms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also wanna give a shout out to two of the main sponsors of the channel, the first being Ace Link Armor. Ace Link Armor is a company out of the state of California. They provide high quality vests and plates. These are level four plates, and this is the Famosa plate carrier. So if you're in the market for high quality vests and plates, I highly recommend Ace Link Armor. I'll put a link to them down in the details section. And if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you'll get 10% off your order. I also wanna thank USCCA. Through your membership with them, you'll get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So I highly recommend if you carry a firearm, you should look into some sort of uh, concealed carry protection. I recommend USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section as well. So last week we had a ton of movement on gun control. There was the passing of HR 8, HR 1446 in the house. And then Dianne Feinstein introduced a federal assault weapons ban and also a large capacity magazine ban. If you're interested in a discussion of those, you can click this tab right there and it'll take you to the recent video that I did talking about the passing of HR 8, HR 1446. One of the things that came out of that last video is I saw a ton of comments from people here in California because a large base of my viewers are here in California and I'm a California resident as well. And a lot of people were talking about, well, that sucks for everybody else in other states. We already live under this regime. It's not really gonna affect us. It's not gonna affect us in the scope of magazines. It's not gonna affect us in the scope of the type of rifles we can have. And that's actually not true. There are some things that this bill does that Dianne Feinstein has introduced in the past and is reintroducing here that will have major implications for us here in the state of California and the ways in which we can configure our so-called featureless rifles. So if you're not familiar, if you're watching out of the state of California or you're just not even familiar if you live in the state of California, the state already has a type of assault weapons ban. The state has penal code 30515, which makes it illegal for people to possess specific types of firearms based on their characteristics and um, how they are put together and the ways in which you configure them can make them either fall under the definition of what the state deems to be an assault weapon or can make them fall outside of that definition. For example, California Penal Code 30515 says that a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine cannot have any of these offending characteristics, being a collapsible telescoping stock, a forward pistol grip, a pistol grip, a flash hider, a grenade launcher, a flamethrower, any of those characteristics on that type of rifle will then be deemed to be an assault weapon in the state of California and your possession of it will be generally prohibited unless you registered it with the state of California prior to the, I think, 2018 deadline. And the distinction between what California Penal Code 30515 does and the bill that Dianne Feinstein has introduced does is the uh, definition of what a pistol grip is. California Penal Code 30515 says you can't have a pistol grip that uh, protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. And then there are some further regulatory definitions that say um, what that means is that the webbing of your hand between your index finger and your thumb cannot drop below the uppermost part of the trigger that is exposed. And because of this definition, people in the state of California have configured their rifles in specific ways with specific products to fall outside of that definition, being that they put things on their rifles that are not considered or defined to be pistol grips. So for example, like I've talked about on the channel before, things like the Sparrow Dynamics grip, which is a featureless grip, and then you have other things like fin grips, which people put on um, their builds to be outside of that definition of what a pistol grip is. And these are considered, I guess, to be a featureless grip. So people configure their rifles in specific ways to fall outside of that language. And so what Diane Feinstein has done in this bill, which she has reintroduced, is she is trying to close off these types of products. She is trying to actually make these types of products fall under the language of what a pistol grip is. So for example, if you go to page 15 of her bill that she's introduced, and I'll put a link to it down in the detail section. If you go to page 15, it says the term pistol grip means a grip, a thumbhole stock, or a Thorson's type grip or stock, or any other characteristic that can function as a grip. So this definition of what a pistol grip is, is much more broad than what California has. And the purpose of it is to close off the use of products like this that people in California have used to work around the laws that we have right now. And you can see why this will be problematic for us here in the state of California, because a lot of us have rifles configured in specific ways that are deemed to be featureless rifle builds. But if something like this were to pass, well, this bill says that if you have a Thorson stock 
or grip on your rifle, that's still a pistol grip and you'd be violating federal law if you have that type of grip or stock on your rifle. Also these other types of grips like the Sparrow Dynamics grip or this fin grip or even some people consider the Juggernaut Tactical grip to be featureless. These uh, types of grips will potentially fall under this language and will still be regulated as being pistol grips and therefore your use of them on rifles in specific builds will make that build to be an assault weapon under federal law. There is some grandfathering provisions in this bill, but then for California, there's gonna be grandfathering in our featureless builds, but then after the fact, you couldn't build a new build with these featureless grips on it. So it would just lead to a whole mess but that's why I say this has impact on Californians as well, because the way that Feinstein has written this, she has taken her experience in California and what we've done in California and has actually narrowed in on that, tried to eliminate some of the things that we have in California, apply that at a national level and make it even worse at a national level. One of the other things I want to mention real quick in this video that I think has major implications for a lot of people, not just here in the state of California, is that on another page, page 24 of this proposed bill, is that Feinstein has made a requirement where magazines will have to have date stamping. And I think this again comes from her experience dealing with California where a lot of people say, well, how will they know when you got magazines in the state of California that are more than 10 rounds? Well, this is how they're gonna require manufacturers to have date stamps on them so they can actually know when they were made. And so therefore, if you possess them after the enactment of this bill, they know that, hey, you came by this magazine after the passing of this bill, and we only grandfathered in magazines that were prior to this bill, unless you're an exempt individual like a law enforcement officer or something like that, you won't be able to possess these date stamped magazines after the, this enactment date. So I thought that was another interesting, important thing that could have impacts for California as well. All this could have impact, especially with litigation that we have going on in California as well with Duncan and Miller. If something federally got passed, it would completely throw some of these cases into a spin. Um, it's good that we already have some of these issues being worked up to the Ninth Circuit, and so it would just maybe elevate it faster to the Supreme Court to decide um, were bans on assault weapons or bans on large capacity magazines a violation of the Second Amendment. I definitely don't want a federal law to be introduced or for people in other states to have to live under this just so we can get one of these cases elevated to the Supreme Court. I'd rather none of these 2A laws ever be passed. Now, do I think that this bill would pass the House and the Senate? I think it's very unlikely that it would pass the House and very, very unlikely that it would pass the Senate, but that doesn't mean we need to sleep on bills like this. We still need to shut them down. I know Feinstein introduces this bill quite often, but we need to just make sure we're hammering it, letting it not get any traction, not letting it any more support so that it can go away for another eight years and then she can reintroduce it in another eight years or whatever, and then we'll deal with it again. But we can't afford to sleep on any of these uh, two-way infringements because we don't want them to get traction. We don't want them to get support and then sneak in. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell because it helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about things like this that are going on in the state of California and federally. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.